So today we have a very special guest with us, as I promised. And so sitting to my right is Reverend Steve Livermore. And if you don't know, in just about two and a half weeks, three weeks, on July 1st, he has a very special assignment that's dear to my heart because Pastor Steve is going to be the lead pastor of First United Methodist here in Chambersburg. So welcome, Pastor Steve. We are so excited that you're coming. Thank you very much. I'm excited too. And so today is VBS Sunday. No VBS because of the pandemic, but we courageously said we're going to have VBS Sunday. And our theme has been walking by faith and not by sight, and how when we meet Jesus, it changes how we look at everything. And I know you have walked with Jesus for a lot of years, and so tell us about how, how you met Jesus. Well, I met Jesus um, as an acquaintance to begin with. Um, my family was very involved in church, and so uh, Jesus was a part of our life. It was a part of uh, our family and uh, I was very involved in the church went to church every Sunday and um, some of my earliest memories are uh, bedtime stories from my grandmother from the Bible so um, I knew Jesus then as somebody who loved me and uh, who gave everything for me and was a wonderful person but it felt more like a really nice uncle that I saw once in a while but I didn't really know all that well and uh, so I knew him that way for a long, long time. Um, and then I went uh, to church camp, and there seemed to be something about the way the church camp um, talked about Jesus and the way that the our counselors talked about Jesus and uh, the, the singing that we did and some of the messages that we heard that just made me think I could have a different kind of relationship uh, with with Jesus and so that stuck with me but I, I was kind of shy and I was kind of uh, scared so there were lots of times when at church camp they say if you want to get, get to know Jesus better come on up here and there were lots of times in my heart I thought oh, I want to go up there but then I thought if I go up there what are they going to do <laughs> what are they going to ask me what am I going to have to say and so some, I'd hold back and I did that at my home church too um, and, and yet I, there, I was still just drawn. There was something in me that drew me to Jesus. So in, when I was in junior high and high school, I was really interested in spiritual things. And I had wonderful uh, Sunday school teachers and um, there were people at my church who were terrific. I went to St. John's United Methodist Church in Williamsport and it was a wonderful place to grow up. And there was uh, one couple there, the Brosmans, and they um, had a terrific ministry to young people. And um, they just attracted um, high school kids and post-high kids to their house for Bible study. And so they lived in, a, in the half of the house, a duplex. And they would have 50 young people sitting in their living room, dining room, up the steps while Bruce taught the Bible and there, it was really um, engaging to me. Something was different in this. And uh, they decided that they were going to go to a Christian music festival. So this is going <laughs> to let you know how old I am. So I had just graduated from high school. It was the summer before I go to college. And the event was called Jesus 76. And so I went mainly because my, some of my friends were going. And it was a you know, getaway kind of weekend uh, and something really different, kind of a, you know, it was a big you know, stage and lots and lots of people. I had never been to anything like that. I thought it'd be kind of cool. So I went and during the day they would have these preachers and this one guy, his name was Brian Rudd. Uh, he was really flamboyant. He was really different. Mm. But that day he was talking about Isaiah chapter 40 and he was taught that that passage where it says, uh, they shall mount up with wings like eagles, mm -hmm. they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. And then he took that text to say, you know, the only way that happens is when they get out of the nest. The only way that eagles fly is when they get out of the nest. And there are some of you here that are just fine in the nest, but it's time to get out and really make a commitment to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And while I was talking, I thought, oh my gosh, he's talking right to me. 
And so that day, that service, I said, okay, I'm not going to mess around anymore. I'm going to get serious. And if Jesus, you gave everything for me, so I'm going to give myself to you. And that's when I gave my life to the Lord, and it just changed everything for me. In that moment, um, I just had this overwhelming joy and assurance and peace um, that I couldn't deny, um, and I knew that I had changed somehow. So that's the moment that I look back to is when I really responded without reservation and uh, gave my life to Christ. Amen. So it sounds like, and I know for a fact, Jesus became more than an uncle mm. that you saw once in a while. And um, so how did, I know he changed everything, but how did knowing Jesus change how you view things, either then or now. How does that change how you look at the world and the things that happen in your life? Well, um, it gives me greater confidence. Like I knew that was one of the things that changed and confidence about um, my relationship with the Lord, my relationship to myself, and my relationship with other people. Um, I remember my mom, you know, my mom and my dad were a little concerned when I came back from that event, and for the weeks following, they were concerned, are you going to level out here at some point? Because I was so excited about it. Um, and then my mom kind of came in, she wouldn't have a talk with me, so I'm just, you know, we're just really concerned, and I said, and what I, the, the big change, the difference that it made in my life at that moment, and I was very sincere then, and I still am, I said, I'm not afraid to die. I said, if I die, I know that... Um, Jesus gave everything for me so that I can have life after I, I die. Well, my mom started to cry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing was that she was so happy that I had found that. And so that's one way that it changed my perspective. Life is not just this that we experience today, but God has given us a life that far exceeds what we can see. So, and if you know that, then everything in this life has a whole different perspective automatically. You know, um, the other thing that changed that Jesus changes in my perspective is knowing that if Jesus did this for me, he would do this for anybody. And that there's nobody that I will ever meet for whom Jesus did not die. There's nobody I ever, that I will ever meet for whom Jesus did not rise from the dead. And so when I look at other people, I recognize their made in the image of God, infinitely valuable to God. Um, so I am on no better, no worse, we're on the same level. And that changes perspective about my relationships with people, people I know and people who are strangers to me that I just meet. Um, so I think that's one of the ways it, it changes my, Jesus changes my perspective. And just so many other things that, you know, my life is not my own, it's not about me. It's about the Lord. And so um, anything that I encounter or any decisions that I have to make or anything I have to process uh, through and think about, I try to, you know, automatically, I didn't have to try, it just kind of is a, there kind of as a default that there is a, a, a way that's Christ-centered to think of this thing. And what would Jesus' perspective be? And then to recognize that just my thoughts aren't, you know, in and of themselves, the important thing. The important thing is what Christ says. So those are some of the ways that I could say right now that Jesus has changed my perspective on things. As today we've been talking about that change in perspective, and, and I love what you said that it could have, that can be a change for anyone. If there's someone who's clinging to the nest, maybe even this morning, if you want to get closer to Jesus, um, it, it just starts with a prayer and, and inviting him to show himself to you. So you're about to make a big change. Um, so moving boxes, I can attest, are there. And you're saying goodbye, even as we're sharing this in worship today. Um, you're also saying goodbye to a congregation that you dearly love. And I know from them who dearly love you. And who, who else are you taking on this adventure of faith who's moving with you? My wife, Susan. Uh, we just celebrated our 40th anniversary. 
so we met in college and uh, were served on the Christian Fellowship Executive Team. And so two weeks after we uh, graduated from college, we, we were married and went to um, Massachusetts for me to attend seminary. So she stuck with me through thick and thin. We have uh, three daughters. None of them are coming with us. They're, they're grown out of the nest. Uh, Emily's our oldest, and she lives in um, Annapolis, Maryland. And then Patience is our middle daughter, and she's married to John, and they live in Columbus, Ohio. And Beth is our youngest daughter, and she lives in Wayne, PA. But the ones that are coming with us are our son Eric, who is 28, and our son Peter, who is soon to be 21. So they'll be coming to Chambersburg with us. So when you're moving, not just yourself, but your family, um, it is a, a leap of faith. And so as you're looking at coming in on July 1st, and as you've gotten to know some of the staff and a few of the leaders, um, so what gives you hope as you're looking ahead to this next chapter? And because of knowing Jesus, what, what gives you hope as you're making this next leap of faith in your life? Well, I think um, the thing that gives me hope is knowing that you know, we don't do our faith, no matter who we are, on our own. It gives me hope knowing that there are other people in this journey, and uh, that there are people, people here at First Church who are on this journey and are committed to living for Christ. And uh, I love the sign out front that you have, uh, knowing Christ and making Him known. And it gives me hope to know that there are people who are committed to that and that are wanting very much for that to become a reality more and more. So I think everything revolving around that gives me hope. And of course, above all of that is just knowing. But I feel strongly that the Lord is in this time, in this transition. Um, and you know, the Lord sometimes surprises us, uh, and this was a bit of a surprise. Uh, but as I've moved through that and talked with you and um, talked with my wife, of course, and other people and have seen, uh, you know, ministry like yours at first, talk to other members of the staff, um, it's becoming more and more evident to me all the time that this is something that the Lord is directing and guiding us through the appointment the bishop makes and through the discernment of the cabinet. So um, that gives me hope. And it gives me a lot of hope that you're coming. I, I'm just thrilled that knowing you, that First Church has just such a wonderful pastor coming. So I, Thank you very much. I, I uh, want to share with you. So when uh, I asked Pastor Steve to come, and he knew we were taping and worship, and we had VBS coming around, one of the questions you asked was about what should we wear it? And at that moment, I happened to be wearing a hot dog suit and had to <laughs> kind of explain that one to him. So um, so I think today uh, we're announcing that, sadly, Pastor Steve, I think we're retiring the hot dog suit for a while. So I know that is a grave disappointment to you. But, so looking um, forward to it. Someone, someone else may take it up, but I think it's retired. But we, we did want to give you something for you to wear. You don't have to put it on now. But um, since you came on VBS Sunday, we are officially welcoming you in to First Lights Orange, of course, because of our orange program, to officially part of the UnVBS Sunday 2020. <laughs> so wear it with pride. I will. From the First Lights Department. And one other thing we have for you. Fit. So this is from pastor to pastor. So um, when I arrived, I don't know where this started, but uh, Pastor Dick Williams was before me and in his office he left this for me so I would always remember that I was the shepherd of God's people. And so today, I relinquish it to you. I couldn't be more happy and joyous that you're the one receiving it. But as I'll be sharing with uh, First Church next week in our last Sunday together, that you will now be their shepherd. Thank you. I'll take good care of it.
in them. Yes. So let us let us pray together. God, we thank you that Pastor Steve is your choice in this next chapter. We thank you that he was willing to take that leap of faith and that by grace you were giving him the nudge to do so. And Lord, especially we pray if there's anyone today listening that is longing for that deeper relationship to move beyond being an acquaintance of Jesus Christ to have what we found here at First Church, a living daily relationship that changes how we look in death, but also changes how we look at life. And so we pray that as they call out to you, you would also lead them on your path. And Lord, we do pray a, a special blessing upon Pastor Steve and Susan and their entire family in this journey of faith. And may you pour out your spirit on them as they serve here at First Church. May they find hospitality and welcome. May we have open ears and open arms to receive the gifts that they bring. And may we encourage them, pray for them, and Lord, walk with them on this journey. And may this be a fruitful, fruitful season for First Church and the journey ahead. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen, thank you.